Good morning students. In this session on marketing and sales, we will be discussing about the pricing of a product and uh, the functions of selling and the marketing conditions, marketing strategy and uh, finally the pricing techniques. So, in this session we study about, we begin with the functions of selling. So, there are certain functions that are to be performed by the sales department. We can generally call it as selling. The first of it as you see here is analyzing the markets thoroughly. So, the markets are to be observed and the variables existing in the market are to be observed and they should be analyzed, examined thoroughly. This is the first and foremost function of sales department. Second is studying consumers psychology and demand. The behavior of the customer and his attitude in the market in relation to our product and the subsequent demand for our product is to be studied. Third point is studying the conditions existing in competitive firms. So, for any firm, if it the competitors will be there, if it is producing the product which is already existing in the market, so the other producers become competitors to this firm. So, what are the conditions existing in competitive firms? What is happening to them? What are their ideas, their strategies? These all things we have to study. Then, studying the market fluctuations. So, internally and internationally also various points are to be observed. The effect of various uh, uh, news in various areas may affect our product. For instance, the material of our product, the price of the material which is used for our product may come down internationally. So, naturally in India also its effect will be there. So, what is the effect of such uh, uh, points are to be considered. So, studying the market fluctuations, so variations in the market. So, preparing the market, sales and other relevant business forecasts. So, we should prepare the market in such a manner that we can promote our product to the market and also what is happening to the sales aspect of our product whether the sales revenue is increasing or not or if it is increasing seasonally or throughout the year the increase is uniform or whatever whatever is taking place that is to be observed and other relevant business forecasts. Forecasting is a technique of assessing the future. So, what happens to the product in the coming years? So, whether the buyer is in a position to buy it for a long time or is there any change in his attitude? He wants to see if the product in what mode and in what fashion. So, like that forecasting of the sales, forecasting of the product's life, etc. All these things are to be studied. Sixth point is assisting in the preparation of marketing plan. So, marketing plan, understanding the conditions of market, then we may plan as how to distribute the produced product to the market. Uh, in the least possible manner, a good quality good must reach the customer. So, if this for this to happen, so a lot of planning is required. So, the marketing planning is required to be done and the sales department assist such assist the organization in such preparation. Then preparing the sales budgets from the market marketing plan. So, what is the budget? to be allocated for the sales department and uh, what are the measures that are required to be taken in the sales department for the increase of profit or increase of sales and uh, better promotion etcetera etcetera. So, all these things are required to be prepared and uh, the budget should be allocated for the sales department. Then deciding on the distribution policy methods and network. So, how best the product manufactured should be distributed 
to the place of demand. So, within the least possible time, a good quality good should reach the customer at reasonable price, of course. So, for this to happen, a good distribution policy is also required to be made and the methods and the networking means how best the people working at different places should be uh, connected together and uh, better interaction should take place between them, better coordination, all these things include in this network. So, in continuation, we have the ninth point that is planning of the advertising campaign. So, how the product should be promoted by way of advertisements with the identifying the new areas and advertising there trying to penetrate the product in the masses. So, this needs a campaign called advertising campaign. So, what is the planning regarding this? Should we have to open a showroom? Should we have to give some uh, advertisements on TV which is normally taking place in today's system like that? What is the mode of advertising? that should be decided in the planning. Then ensuring suitable packing of the products. So, today in today's system, we are all observing that packing technology has brought revolutionary changes in the marketing department, in the marketing field, in the market. So, that means the product, not only the product should be attractive, but also the package in which it is kept also should be a fascinating and attractive to the customer. So, that also has of late become a very, very important and thrusting point to the marketing. Creating communications network for the department. So, the sales department or the selling personnel should have better communication systems with the customers and such data collected should be recorded and uh, much interaction to take place between the customers in the market and the sales department because the personnel in the sales department are the direct persons who interact with the customers. So, how best the communication should be created, how best they should be networked, all these strategies are framed in this aspect. Now, the last point is developing systems for sales reporting and statistical analysis. So, the customer's reaction, the volume of sales, their increase and decrease and at what rate they are decreasing or increasing, all such data collected from the market should be recorded in a proper manner so that it can be easily understood and analyzed and further actions should be taken. So, the, there should be a system that should be developed to understand this mechanism of the mechanism uh, what is called the sales reporting and also of course, we take the uh, subject called statistics, statistical principles are used in putting the data in the form of a tabular, a table etcetera and the graphs etcetera to understand it in the best possible manner. The next is providing technical advisory and other services to the customers. So, technical advisory and other services to the customers. Customers when they purchase the goods, they expect so many things, their expectations are many. So, what the customer wants? What does he want actually? So, the after sales services or the services before the sales if required are to be provided to the customer. Similarly, a technical advisory board should be uh, constituted to provide such services to the customer. This is also a basic groundwork that is required to be done by the sales department personnel then determining sales staff requirements. So, the persons existing in the sales department, they require certain things, they require certain comforts, they require certain arrangements, provisions should be made. So, what best can be done to them, so that the uh, communication will be in its most qualitative form from the market. So, better interaction takes place between the customers and the sales department personnel. So, to prepare all this, what are the requirements of the sales staff, their salaries, their commission, their uh, traveling allowance for instance or other amenities etcetera are to be understood and they should be determined. To explore newer markets, so any, any organization will not stop its marketing limited to a particular place. 
So every firm manufacturing something wants to expand its size. So as the size of the organization increases, new markets are to be detected and to be uh, uh, promoted and uh, on such areas a lot of concentration is required to be done. So exploring your markets means identifying the new areas where our product can be introduced and uh, uh, developing that area and the better distribution facilities should be provided there to uh, take the customers into our paths. Ensuring effective coordination. So, above all, effective coordination only brings good results. There should be a proper understanding and coordination between the customer and the sales department people and the sales department people in marketing and again the production department people. So, therefore, a, an effective coordination system is to be adopted for ensuring good results. This is how we can understand the functions of the sales department. Now, next point is the marketing conditions. What are, what is this marketing conditions? Any firm, if it wants to sustain for a long time, because it is the wish and will of any firm, it wants to last for a long time, it wants to promote its product for a long time. For this to happen, the conditions existing in the market are required to be observed. What are these conditions? What are the variables existing in the market? Basically, the first and foremost variable in the market is the customer for any firm. And secondly, if any competitors are there, they take the second place. So, we take that certain competitors are there and the customer is there. So, understanding the behavior, understanding the attitude of the customer, what are his wants and wishes, what is the negative aspect of the customer towards our product, so what is the positive aspect of it and also what is taking place in other firms who are our competitors, what is the pricing policy of the same product, what is the strategy in various aspects like in promoting the uh, goods or product and in distributing it. So what they are doing, uh, we must have a thorough understanding of the market. So, this is, uh, these variables are very small, in fact there are so many, so basically a customer and uh, other competitors form the variables in the market. So, the market conditions include many, but mainly the customer is to be observed. So, if we produce the goods according to the wish of the customer, then it, it can be ensured that the product will have demand for a longer time. Now, the market conditions basically are of three types. The first is monopoly. Monopoly is, it consists of one seller. So, only one seller is there and many customers, many buyers are there. The seller may be a government or a private regulated firm under the regulation of government. So, for instance, the petrol the petrol prices are well regulated by the government. It is totally under the control of government. So, it is a monopoly. The government has monopoly totally, uh, having total control, overall control over the pricing and distribution and the generation and interacting with other countries from where it is importing. So, all these functions are expected, are done at the government level only. No individual is doing this. Similarly, any other private regulated firm also can be given permission by the government to produce a particular product for the sale to the customers. So, here there is only one seller. So, in a monopolistic competition, their competition is monopolistic, only one person is producing and selling it. Therefore, demand will be more, supply is less. So, if it is a private regulated firm, there exists a tendency that he may increase the price of the product because the demand always will be more and the supply is less. So, monopolistic attitude is not advisable in the field of trading or marketing. So, this is to be curbed. If any individual is capturing the total volume of business and not allowing anybody to come into the same business, this is to be 
uh, curbed at its root level. This is to be suppressed. So, the government takes actions in certain areas where a particular individual in the name of firm will uh, uh, create a monopolistic competition and the prices will be totally under his control. So, the buyer will be under the clutches of the seller. So, therefore, in a monopolistic competition, a, the seller is compared to a bear. As the bear clutches a person, it will not leave. Generally, we, we understand like that. So, a seller is considered to be a, a, a bear in a monopolistic competition. So, that is the first type of the market condition. The second type is oligopoly. Oligopoly, the market is controlled by few sellers. It is totally put under, under the control of a few number of sellers, setting similar prices and making difficult for the entry of other firms. So, these few people with the intention of producing the same good and they, they are the persons who fix the price and they do not allow the others firms to enter into the same business or to produce the same product and putting it to sale. So, this is what is called oligopoly. To some extent, this, uh, this uh, improves the quality of competition. Oligopolistic competition is advisable because sellers are increasing in number, there will be a competitive spirit that exists in the market. So, the prices will be to at some extent under control and the buyer will be satisfied. But if the attitudes of the few sellers are, are is not to allow other firms and keep the entire volume of production in their hands as far as marketing is concerned, it is objectionable. So, hence the government involves in certain areas where the rules are getting deviated by such firms. So, totally oligopolistic competition compared to monopolistic competition is advisable. The third one is the perfect competition. The perfect competition in this the market trading is done by many buyers and sellers in a uniform commodity such as wheat, rice, copper, etc. So, the commodity trading, uh, the essential commodities especially wheat, rice and other pulses etc. So, there will be many buyers and many sellers in the market we are seeing in present system. So, this is a very good environment where no seller will have a final say, no buyer will have a final say. So, buyers will get the product at a reasonable price because of competition. So, many sellers being in the same field, the rates or the cost of the product will come down naturally and the buyer will be uh, able to get the product at a low price and a good quality product. This is the result of a perfect competition. So, always perfect competition is expected to be existing in the market. So, this is how we can understand the market conditions. Now, the next point marketing strategy. What is the marketing strategy? This involves the close observation of market variables like product, its price, the customer, the place, etcetera and forming ideas to promote the product in the best possible and efficient manner. This is what is called marketing strategy. So, we have discussed just now about the market conditions. So, understanding thoroughly the variables existing in the market like the customer, his attitude, his lifestyle, his behavior and his wish and wants in the coming years and now and also the competitors and their actions in the market. So, all these variables, the prices also form, the promotion, the sale promotion activities, the distribution activities. So, how they are taking place in the market. So, all these uh, form variables in the market. So, they are to be closely studied and then a idea, a strategy is to be formed for promoting the product in the best possible and efficient manner to the customer, satisfying totally all the needs of the customer, we should be able to uh, give the product to the customer 
in the least possible time when there is demand. So, this is what is called the marketing strategy. So, strategy means forming ideas as how best we can always keep the product of good quality in the hands of the customer. So, for that what is required to be done is just called marketing strategy. Now, marketing strategy is of two parts. The one is marketing segment. So, what is this marketing segment? Segment is a part. It may be defined as the division of a market into groups of segments having similar wants. This similar wants is a very important word here. So, trying to detect that group in the market which has which has a similar want. So, for instance, here I take an example of infants. If uh, some time back the immortality rate was more, that means children used to die in the beginning stages only because of lack of medical aid. And now the medical because of the advancement in the medical technology and the medical department and uh, survivals are many and children are many. Therefore, there is lot of potential for the products to be produced which are of use to children. So, this is a particular segment whose wants are same. They want a child wants a soap, a child wants powder, a child wants some oil for massage, etc. So, this particular segment, marketing segment, is uh, the, the wants of the segment are similar. Similarly, old people, so they need uh, medicines because in old age we usually get ailments. So, what are the medicines that are exclusively uh, are to a maximum extent used in that particular old age? So, there is a lot of potential in the pharmaceutical field to go for such production of uh, drugs uh, which are for use for. Uh, old people, if the survival rate at that age is more. So, this kind of study of people is what is called demography. So, demographical uh, uh, data also is very much required. So, this is how we can understand the particular marketing segment. So, secondly, we go to the marketing mix. Before that, again another definition is there market segment is a target group of people to whom the firm wishes to capture. So, the target people, target group. So, there are so many customers of different ages or different attitudes, different behavior existing in the market. So, who are our customers? For our product, who is the person to be selected? So, if, if a particular firm is manufacturing cars, who are the customers for a car manufacturing industry? Not all existing in the market. Well, there are three layers basically. A rich layer, layer of rich people, layer of middle class people, layer of poor people, middle middle class. So, who can go and afford? Who can afford to purchase a car? Basically, a, a rich person can afford very easily. So, that is the target group which is to be captured first. Then they can think of going into the other group or trying to penetrate their product into the other community. Exactly what is happening in today's system is the same. So, today a middle class person also is in a position to purchase a car because of so many other schemes the, the product is put before the customer and there is no difficulty in the uh, payment uh, procedure. So, various uh, higher purchase programs have been introduced by many manufacturers for TVs for refrigerators, for cars, etc. and etc. So, the target group is very important here. So, the market segment is the target group of people to whom the firm wishes to capture. The next is the marketing mix. It consists of marketing plan that will be followed to satisfy the needs of the consumers identified in the market segment. So, the marketing mix consists of marketing plan that will be followed to satisfy the needs of the consumers. First, identify the needs of the consumers in the market and what best can be done in this regard by the firm. So, the 
uh, the according to that uh, point of view, we can prepare a marketing plan. So, this is what is called marketing mix. We further continue to understand it in much better way. Marketing mix is the combination of competitive efforts exerted by a firm to accomplish sales or profit. It is the combination of competitive efforts exerted by a firm to accomplish sales or profit. So, what is the uh, competition existing in the market? For instance, the pricing, price of the product. Sometimes the customer feels that the cost of the product is very high. Then what can be done in this regard? How best the price can be reduced reasonably or brought down reasonably so that the firm also will not be affected by this. So, a best uh, planning is required, a strategy is required to be framed here. So, that is one aspect. Next is the distribution if you take for instance, distribution problems. Sometimes the go goods are of good quality, customer wants it, but they will not be available to him. Somewhere, some other place they are available, not at his place. So, it is a problem of distribution. So, what is happening there? What are the uh, stagnating points there? They are to be concentrated and the channel should be made uh, for uh, free flow of uh, components should take place in that particular channel that is created. So, so this is how various uh, uh, factors are to be considered and uh, these they to be they are to be mixed that is actually called marketing mix in order to accomplish sales or profit. This is how we can understand the marketing strategy. Now, the variables that are existing in marketing mix are we can see here the product, the price, the promotion and the place, the physical distribution. So, the product is the first variable in marketing mix. So, once the product comes into consideration, its form, in what form it is available in the market. Uh, should it be possible to put the same product in various forms, variety or at what price it is available in the market. So, whether to reduce the price or increase the price and promotion, how best this is being promoted or the qualities of the product are being told to the customer. So, promotion activity is nothing but uh, uh, putting before the customer the qualities, the advantages, the uh, functioning aspect of it and the other qualities of the product are put before the customer. So, there should be a means to do this. This is what is called a promotion. So, promoting the product and the place where it is distributed. So, where is the place of demand? So, that is physical distribution of the product to that place. So, basically this is how we can understand what are the various variables. So, we go into the details. Now, the pro yes, yes, hello, yes. My name is Aikman, sir. Yes, you are from which college? I am speaking from sixth semester. Sixth semester. Previous semester, right? Uh huh. Government uh -huh. issue, correct? Yes, please. What the question? Give the difference between bad selling and individual selling. Yes. Babe, I beg your pardon. Give the difference. Yes. Back selling uh. and individual selling. Back selling and individual selling. Individual selling. Uh, back selling means uh, uh, there is no particular term like this. Okay, you see, back selling means not openly selling in the market. And individual selling is the firm totally sells it into the market. Uh, only a particular medium, uh, uh, the center person, the middle person will be there between the customer and the producer. That is called uh, the direct selling. In fact, it is called direct selling. So, individual selling is nothing but taking the products directly to the customer. So, the firm also directly puts the parts before the customer, but there are some wholesalers and retailers in between. So, without them it is not possible to directly take it unless it is a beginning stage. So, in the beginning stages any firm or any person individually will go to the customer directly. There will not be any other person existing in between the two. That is called individual selling. The back selling is having uh, 
uh, I can understand this term like this. Backselling means having persons in the uh, in the middle, the process. If there are so many persons in the middle uh, uh, in the marketing field, then it can be attributed as a backselling. So that is the explanation I can give in this aspect and we can continue with the subject. The product, the target market is to be determined by considering the variables in the marketing mix. So, the first one is the product we are taking. So, the product, the in the product, the variety of the product in various forms if it needs to be produced, it should be produced and put before the uh, customer and the quantity, what is the quantity at which we have to produce it? Should the quantity be same throughout the year or should it be altered in a particular time of the year like that? It should be decided keeping in view the target market. The brand name, yes, the brand name is a very big, what is that called entity existing in the market. The brand name has of late got very much uh, uh, momentum. See, if in this aspect I would like to say, uh, if I as an individual uh, purchase the various parts required for a TV and produce a TV and put it in the market saying that it is available at about 7000 rupees, wearing in the market at about 15000 rupees the color TV of the same features is available. So, what happens to me? What happens to my product? Undoubtedly, there is quality in my product also, but what happens? Other TVs which are existing in the market are having a brand name like Videocon, BPL, Thompson, etc. I do not have that brand name. So, I, am, I have sincerely assembled them and uh, reasonably also I have kept the price, but then trust will not be there, customers will not come in the initial stages uh, running towards my product. Why? Because there is a psychological uh, factor existing here. Customers are habituated to purchase the TV of color features and other features at a price of 10 to 15,000, not at 7,000. So, this psychological bonding is to be broken, it is very difficult now. So, for me it may take some years to go into the market and get the same name in the market on par with the other brand names. So, brand name is a very important tool. Then next is packaging. So, packaging technology of late has become a very, very important tool to penetrate our product into the market. For instance, we are seeing the sachets of various products like shampoos, coconut oil, any product you can take it is available in sachet form for a price of about 1 to 2 rupees maximum. Now, even a person below the middle class level also can purchase that product and he can use for it. Sometime back it was not there. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. Sir, I am a student from Government Super 22nd Yes. Sir, I have a question sir, regarding tax, sir. Hmm. Regarding tax? Yes, sir. Yes, please proceed. Sir, could you please tell me how sales tax is fixed, sir? Sales tax? Yes. Sales tax, sir? Yes, yes. The, the sales tax, fixation of sales tax depends on various factors. So, the type of the product that you have produced where you are marketing it, the area where you are marketing it, the local government existing there will have a particular system of sales tax. So, the central government is trying to make a uniform rate of sales tax on all products. Of course, it is happening, it has, it has done that in various products, but still a lot is required to be done. So, the sales tax particularly depends on the type of product you are manufacturing and the place where you are promoting it and the volume of production, the volume of sales you are making, the turnover we can say. So, all these aspects are to be uh, are taken into consideration before we arrive at a particular tax value. We continue with the subject. So, packaging technology. So, how best and uh, how affectionately, how uh, uh, attractively we can package the material. So, uh, keeping in view the target market. This is how we can understand one variable that is product. Then coming to the price, the basic price, the discount, the credit terms. 
So should we have to continue uh, fixing the price on par with the uh, other competitors that is called market price or should we have to give discount? So then we have to take a decision to promote our product. Then credit terms. So nowadays uh, many products are available on higher purchase basis. So this is what is called credit. So if the credit on credit if it is to be provided, what is the planning, what is the procedure to be adopted. So this is how a pricing policy, so the, the some decisions regarding the price of a product can be taken. Now in continuation we have this promotion, promoting a product like advertising. So how effectively we can advertise about the product. So what is the media available to us? Today TV is a very powerful media available to any manufacturer for a few seconds of advertisements the product is going into the deeper depths of any area. So therefore advertising is one powerful media. So what are the plans that are required to be made in this? Then sales promotion, how best the sales are to be improved? So what is required to be done as far as sales personnel is concerned and other activities involved in sales are concerned? Then publicity, so much publicity, so publicity is of two types. One before the introduction of the product, second after the introduction of the product. So before the introduction of the product, what is the publicity that is required to be given? We are seeing many products, products before their entry into the market, we are seeing them on TV screen today. So after some time, they are available for us in the market, they are available to us in the market. So this is what is called publicity. For a particular product, before its introduction, publicity may be required to uh, go for a better promotion. Then coming to distribution, the what are the channels that are there? See already existing market will be there, the newer markets and the more markets, more places are, uh, are to be detected and the, a channel is to be created for the flow of material from the place of manufacture to that place where the customer is wanting it. So how best this channel can be uh, made without any disturbances. Then sales forces, what are the sales forces? How efficient are the sales persons involved in the process? How, how best we can sell them in that particular area? So all areas will not be having much demand, some areas we have to detect them. So what are the forces uh, as far as sales personnel are concerned and the attitudes of the person there or customer there is concerned? Then transport, what is the mode of transport? So one of the prime concerns of any firm is to keep the product in the hands of the uh, customer at the earliest. So therefore, what transportation methods are required to be uh, adopted there? So this is how we can understand it. Then concept of cost, cost is the total expenditure incurred in making any product. So for any product to be manufactured, so uh, some cost is required involved there. So the total expenditure includes the expenditure on manufacturing, selling and distribution etc. So for manufacturing and uh, during the stage of manufacturing some expenditure is required, during the stage of selling some expenditure and again in the distribution process also some expenditure is required. So the summation of all these expenditures is called the cost of the product. So what are the elements of cost? The total cost of a product manufactured can be divided into three main elements, cost on materials, cost on labor and expenses. So the basically some raw material is required for a product. So what is the cost of that material? So some labor is required to form it into the final shape. So some cost incurred on labor. Then other expenditure other than the cost on materials and labor. So these are, this is how we can basically divide the cost into three elements. Now what is the cost of materials? Materials again there is direct cost, materials cost, indirect material cost. Direct material cost is the cost that is only expended for the basic raw material of the product. Some other materials which are also required in the process, uh, they are called indirect uh, materials. So some bolts and nuts etc. in the final assembly they may be considered as a indirect material. So that can be the indirect material cost. Similarly, cost on labor, this is also direct cost, indirect cost. 
So, there are direct uh, employees working and indirect employees. Direct labor is direct employees are those employees who are directly working on the machine and transforming the raw material into final product or they are the persons who are producing the product. They are called direct labor and all other staff who are supporting such activity, they come under the category of indirect labor. So, the uh, in uh, the experiment, the expenditure made on direct labor is the cost on labor and also on indirect labor. So, this can be divided into two. Then expenses, so other expenses like factory expenses, administrative expenses, sales expenses, etc. All these are again coming under the category of expenses. Now, components of cost, the prime cost, factory cost, office cost, total cost and selling price. So, this is how we can finally arrive at the final cost of the product. So, first is the prime cost. What is it? The prime cost is the summation of direct material cost, direct labor cost and direct expenses. See the direct material cost. Material cost means the basic raw material. So, what is the cost involved? For a particular product, some 400 grams of raw material is required. So, for kg, it has some price in the market. So, for that 400 grams, how much like that? Direct labor cost. So, what is the time taken for the transformation of raw material into final product? Basing on that, we give some uh, remuneration to labor that is called direct labor cost. And whatever are di direct expenses, what are these direct expenses? If any special jig or fixture or any special support is required to be provided uh, during the manufacturing stage of that product, this particular cost comes under that. So, that is called direct expenses. It may be there, it may not be there. Then coming to factory cost, factory cost is prime cost, the addition of prime cost which has been arrived earlier plus factory expenses. That means the expenditure that is made at the place of working factory means the place where the products are produced. So, at the place of working, uh, whatever is expenditure that is made that comes under factory expenses. For instance, the lighting that is provided, the depreciation of the plant totally, that is the equipment existing in that factory. So, similarly, the, uh, the cost incurred on the cotton waste, the lubricating oil for the maintenance of the machinery. So, all these uh, include in this factory expenses. Remember, this is the expenditure made at the place of manufacture only. So, this is how we can arrive at the final factory cost. Then coming to the office cost or production cost. This is the addition of the factory cost which has been arrived just now plus administrative expenses. So, administrative block will be there for any firm. The persons, the personnel existing in the administrative are not direct workers, they are indirect workers. They are mostly concerned with the uh, the, the aspects of salaries and other benefits, incentives, etc. So, they look after all such uh, calculations, accountancy is being maintained. So, that is called administrative expenditure. Their salaries, their uh, comforts, their building, the furniture, the depreciation on furniture existing in administration and their telephonic bills, the various fax message charges, etc. What not? Whatever expenditure that is in relation to the administrative administration uh, spend that comes under the administrative expenses. Then lastly, we have a total cost. The total cost is the addition of office cost that is cost of production and selling expenses and distribution expenses. So, after the manufacture of the product, it should be sold in the market. So, whatever is expended in the sales department, the salary of personnel existing in the sales department, their commission, so their traveling allowance, etc. So, any comforts that are given to them. And similarly, distribution expenses. So, in the creation of channel, whatever is expended, in the opening of a particular showroom, whatever is cost incurred and uh, also any car or transportation that is used for their purpose, it comes under the cost. Then finally, the selling price is the addition of total cost and any profit, if it is there, it is added there. That is how we arrive at the selling price of the product. So, we have discussed about the marketing conditions the marketing strategy and also the cost aspects of the product. In the next session, we discuss about the pricing policy and 
by the break-even analysis and budgetary control. Till then, goodbye.